LA Korean Association vs LAPD soccer match. iRobi helps elderly patients in New Zealand. Korean marine products featured in biggest halal food market. Jewish education on exhibit. Kim Gi Yoon, a lawyer turned comedian. Hello, welcome to Going Global. I'm your host, Tong Semi. We start the show today with a heartwarming story. The wishes of an eight year old terminal cancer patient, Doria Murray from the United States, came true with the help of medicines in China. Dorian has been fighting rhabdomyosarcoma, a rare form of muscle cancer, since he was four years old. And his father wrote Dorian's final wish on his social media account, which was to become famous in China. Dorian chose China because of the Great Wall, and Dorian's father requested people all over the world to send pictures of themselves with the hashtag DStrong. This request spread fast, far and wide, and Chinese internet users responded in droves, posting pictures of themselves holding posters with the hashtag written on it. Dorian was very happy to see that he had become famous in China. Now, on that heartwarming note, let's start with our first story today. Our first story today takes us to Los Angeles. A unique soccer match took place there, featuring members of Korean soccer clubs in Los Angeles and police officers whose jurisdiction covers the Korean town. This soccer match helped form a close bond between the Korean community and police officers. Let's take a closer look. This is a high school in Los Angeles, California. Members of the LA Korean Soccer Club Association and police officers from the Olympic Community Police Station are engaged in a friendly match. The LA Koreatown falls under the jurisdiction of the Olympic Community Police Station, and today's match is the first of its kind meant to foster a sense of community between the police department and the Korean residents. And we had a great time. We had a, a game of friendship to build uh, to build uh, on the community relationship that we have uh, with uh, with the Korean American community. So this was an opportunity for the players and our police officers to get to know each other a little bit better. The match was split into four 15-minute sets. High school marching bands and cheerleaders added to the excitement. The final result: a draw at four to four. The Titan game. 맨 처음에는 한국 대표팀이 2대 5로 이기다가 2대 2, 3대 3, 4대 4 아주 박진감 넘치는 게임을 아주 잘했습니다. I really enjoy playing with these guys. They're they're really good. They made us sweat. They made us work hard, but it was pretty damn good. Okay, it doesn't get better than that, right? A tie. Everyone won. More than anything else, today's soccer match made it easier for the residents to approach police officers. 경찰들을 보면 우리 항상 어렵게 생각하고 우리한테 항상 어 가깝게 다가가지 못하는 존재로 생각했었는데 오늘 이 경기를 통해서 같이 한 커뮤니티 한 일원으로서 같이 하나에 어울릴 수 있다는 그걸 느끼게 됐고요. The event organizers plan to continue holding friendly matches in the future and bring the Korean community and police officers closer. Now moving on to our next story. Nursing robots for elderly patients are no longer an odd sight. Korean-made robots have been deployed to take care of patients in New Zealand. Let's find out more. An ordinary house in New Zealand. The robot iRobi is speaking to an elderly resident. Inami, I believe it's time for you to take your lunchtime medication. Prompted by the robot, she takes her medication. Well done. Thank you for taking your medications. Next, the robot guides her through an exercise session. This resident has a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and lives alone. She requires daily medication and physical rehabilitation, and the robot is helping her with it. He's excellent. I love him because he's my companion. Um, he's also kept me going. All of her medication and exercise records are transmitted to her physicians. 
Thanks to the data, her doctors can constantly check up on her remotely. If something comes up, iRobi will send an emergency message so that the patient can promptly receive help. We can also ensure that they have all the information is available at their fingertips. Despite all the information they're given at the hospital, they often forget. So the robot helps remind them, which helps us manage the patient. iRobi is a Korean-made robot that was originally developed as a teacher's aid for daycare centers. It was repurposed as a medical robot. 환자들이 직접 그 바이탈 컨디션을 체크를 할수 하기가 어려운데 이 로봇이 뭐 맥박이라든가 혈압 그리고 산소 포화도 등을 이제 체크를 해서 그 의사들한테 직접 그 전송을 해 주는 기능을 하고 있습니다. iRobi can also provide additional features like video calls, internet access and video games. And as a result, elderly patients in more remote parts of the country have welcomed iRobi. iRobi is being tested on 60 patients by the University of Auckland, and it is expected to be of great help to patients suffering from other illnesses. Let's move on to our next story. Muslims consume food and products that are certified halal, and the process of getting halal certification is extremely difficult. Recently, an event took place in Indonesia to promote Korean marine products. 87% of the Indonesian population is Muslim. Let's take a closer look. An Indonesian chef and a Korean chef are taking part in a cooking competition using the same ingredients. They are all Korean marine products. Tapi di chef dari chef dari Korea itu rasanya juga enak banget dan pertama kali juga aku cobain di dalamnya ada tok. Today's event is meant to promote Korean marine products in Indonesia. 87% of Indonesia's population is made up of Muslims, making Indonesia the world's largest market for halal food products. Halal refers to foods that Muslims may lawfully eat or use, and in order to achieve a halal certification, every step of the preparation of food, from selection to cooking, must conform to Islamic law. Starting in 2019, all food in Indonesia must undergo halal certification. Only very few Korean marine products have been certified halal. 한라 시장이 본고장이 인도네시아에 와서 직접 어떻게 이 시장 상황이 돌아갔는지 그것도 저희가 좀 보고 경험하고 여러 가지 정보를 얻기 위해서 Twelve Korean companies took part in this event, and they have held talks with 28 buyer groups, signing contracts worth 30,000 US dollars. People also got to wear hanbok, Korean traditional dress, and try out archery as well as dishes like fried flatfish, fish cake soup, and kimbap. This event was an opportunity to make Korean marine food products and culture more known in Indonesia, the world's largest halal market. Our next story takes us to Israel. To date, Jews make up one-third of all Nobel Prize laureates and 40% of laureates in the science categories. What is their secret? One can find a hint to this question at a science museum in Israel. Let's find out more. This is the Bloomfield Science Museum, located in Hebrew University in Jerusalem, Israel, where Albert Einstein once lectured. All of the exhibits here are made of recycled materials and children can touch them directly. It's to trigger curiosity in children. Visitors can ask questions about the exhibits at any time. There are guides all over the museum who immediately answer the children's questions. 
שזה מוזיאון המדע המוביל בסן פרנסיסקו, ולמדנו איך מקימים מוזיאון מדע, והקמנו את המוזיאון מדע פה בירושלים, בירת ישראל. המטרה של המוזיאון היא בראש ובראשונה להנגיש, להביא את המדע שבחיי היום-יום, מדע שסביבנו, להבנה של כל בן אדם, כי אנחנו מאמינים שגם ילדים וגם מבוגרים... All guides are science majors at Hebrew University, making them good role models for children. אנחנו שם קצת לעזור ולהסביר, ולפעמים לשאול את השאלות הנכונות, ושהוא יענה על התשובות. ככה בעצם הוא עושה מדע שהוא יותר כמו עבודה של חוקר. By learning about science through playing, Israeli children naturally learn that science isn't only in books, but also something that can be used in everyday life. teaching children that learning is fun and encouraging curiosity. This is how the Jewish people have fostered many brilliant scientific minds. Our last story of the day takes us to France. There is a Korean woman who has quit her promising job as a lawyer and instead has become a comedian. Kim Gi-yoon feels happiest when she can make someone else laugh. Let's find out more about her comedy. A woman receives a text message from her boyfriend on Valentine's Day. However, it was a goodbye letter. This is a song about a hurt woman who wants to shatter her boyfriend. French-Korean comedian Kim Ki-yoon is the one who came up with this humorous interpretation of a sad event, all with a song, melody, and dance. Kim's gag session is in full swing at this hall. Kim's performance consists of humorous retellings of what's happened in her life, including the misunderstandings she's faced in her childhood and the stories told by her classical singer mother. Kim doesn't put on funny acts, but people burst into laughter. I think she can play the one who can be very sweet and in the emotions. I think she can also be very hard and very hard, like she is in life. Une femme battante qui, qui fait des choses, qui avance. Je pense qu'elle peut jouer plein de choses. Elle a, elle a une palette qui est très importante à mon avis. Until a few years ago, Kim was an up-and-coming lawyer in France. She studied law at a prestigious school and finally became a lawyer after 10 years of studying. She even won an established rhetoric competition for lawyers. Then by chance she took part in a comedy festival in Switzerland and won the New Comedian Award. For the first time she realized how happy she was when she made others laugh. When I was in the first time, I was able to make people laugh. But that feeling was so much fun. So I thought that I was able to make a job. I thought that I was able to make a job. When her mother heard that Kim had quit her job to become a comedian, a job with an uncertain future, she thought that the inevitable had finally come. Her daughter had always liked standing in front of the camera, and although a little disappointed, she vowed to become her daughter's biggest fan. So, I thought I would have changed the job, and I would have changed the job in that time. I would have changed the job. Following her transition from law to comedy, the French media has been highly supportive of Kim. I was able to see the show of people a lot more and more. I would have laughed. One day her laughter virus may spread beyond the borders of France and across the world. I hope you enjoyed today's stories on Going Global. 
An amazing form of bonding can exist between animals and humans, such as the friendship between Jimbo, a three-meter-tall Kodiak bear, and a rehabilitation center owner, Jim Kualtik. The two share hugs and cuddles. Most people think of cats and dogs when it comes to pets, but as long as there's commitment, most animals can become good companions. The bond between Jim and Jimbo is one that may not be easy to find even between people. So, do take a look around you. You may find a true priceless friend. Going Global will be back next week with more exciting and interesting stories from all around the world. Thank you for watching.